Eight week old baby, so there's lots of key characters. Yeah, right there. yeah. Okay, my so um, you, you know what? It's so true. You have so many friends around when you're getting married that are pregnant or having babies or just going through that life stage as well. Right. My my um, uh, best friend at the time had a yeah, probably a six week old. I remember at the wedding. So I was married, yes, exactly two months. So, but the hens, she was, he was probably four, four or five weeks old. And so then they don't get to come. They don't get to come. She came for half an hour. She was like, I have to rush back. I'm breastfeeding. And then on the wedding day, I remember her having to, um, we had, we hired a babysitter because he was two months old and she was breastfeeding. And I had to pick an outfit that was suitable for all of that. Yeah. Um, and she was having hot flushes. And so I want to re-hen too. Yeah, right. We're going to make that trend today, guys. We're going to have a re-hen and a renewal of vows. And then how amazing. I just want to talk a little bit about your business and your success story and how long you've been in the industry and the legacy of what you carry and how amazing this is in person and me regretting not keeping my bouquet. So that's a lot. <laughs> Introduce yourself, please. Hi. Well, I'm Jess. I'm the owner of The Keeps, yep. and we preserve bouquets and all the other memorabilia after the wedding day. And so, with the preservation process, does everything look like this, or how? what are the different ways that you can preserve? Yeah, so everything we do is completely customised to the couple. So, the domes is just one option. Yeah. We've got frames, keepsake boxes. Uh, perspex boxes and then we've even got a whole heap of smaller items if you don't want something so large yeah like candle holders goblets and even a photo box that actually opens up and they can store items inside oh beautiful so it's just really customized yeah everything. and then each of those things are completely customized so if you don't like black this yeah. comes in white wood a whole heap of other things amazing and how long has your business been running for okay more than 32 years so I'm second generation, took yeah. over from mum yeah. in 2016, so. Amazing. And you, so you've been running the business now for eight years. Yeah. And what I found so fascinating um, when we last spoke was the way that the preservation takes place is almost like museum grade. It is. So we have a plant physiologist on team and we have our own in-house laboratory, including a scanning electron microscope. So <laughs> to preserve the bouquet, it's photographed, it's documented. Each of the cat colours are catalogued to the Royal Horticultural Society's colour catalogue. Oh and then goodness. we pull it all apart and preserve each flower. And sometimes even each petal yes. based on their cell structure. That is insane. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. My goodness. And so how old is this beauty? So this one here is from 2020. It's so majestic. Can I tell you, I feel like I'm in a Disney movie. So that's how I feel. <laughs> I'm not even joking. It is so beautiful in person. I really feel like you have to see this to understand that what the presence of this would be like in your home. And I know that for my daughters, seeing something like this from the wedding that always sits in the home would have just been so beautiful. Absolutely. I mean, I say to people all the time now, the favourite thing about my frame now, and I was saying to you yeah. earlier, I've been married for almost eight years, is I've got a three-year-old, and she says to me all the time, oh, they're mummy's flowers from when mummy was a princess and married daddy. Aww. And I just love that it brings to her yeah. how magical weddings are. Yeah. Because it is the most magical day. It is. And kids have this wonderful way of seeing the magic in everything. They do. They do. But that's why it feels so special. I feel like... So with yours, do you have your wedding photo with the bouquet or is it just the bouquet that you've presented? So I've got my ma my wedding bouquet. I had almost a metre long bouquet. Wow. Um, so it trails over my marriage certificate and then I have a big photograph either side and it's... Oh, so your marriage certificate is in there too? Yeah. That's so beautiful. So it's quite a... Whereas feature. mine's sitting in an envelope. <laughs> I don't have my bouquet. But what I found interesting as well, so with the bouquet, the bride, when she tosses the bouquet, does she toss her bouquet or a secondary bouquet? Well, generally they toss a secondary bouquet. Yeah. So a lot of florists... This is a good tip, guys. People don't know this. Yeah, well, a lot of florists use that as a, a extra that they sort of tack on. Yeah. Um, and that's because... As a bridesmaid or as a person wanting to get married, 
Would you want to be underneath this to catch it? It's going to hurt. Yeah. <laughs> They're heavy. They're heavy. They are big. I mean, my bouquet, as I said, was over a meter long. Trying to lob that over the back of my head wow. would have just been impossible. Yeah. So I had a tiny little thing that I lobbed yeah. through at my sister, and she caught it. Did she so, get married? She's not yet, but she has been engaged for a very long time. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> so, well, hopefully this will give her a kick in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> I may or may not have signed her up to wedding week. <laughs> oh, good. Good. There you go. So there's a good um, little name drop there. Wedded week, guys. Tell us about what your offer is for wedded week. So we're offering one of our candle holders as a free gift to you if you buy one of our packages. Okay. And so that's something you guys can either gift to mum and dad as a thank you for all their hard work that they've done in the lead up oh, to the wedding. Yeah, okay. Or it's something you can keep for yourself and light at anniversaries or then at christenings and yeah. those sorts of other significant events that then happen yeah. after the big one which is your wedding. Yeah. And they're just so delightful. They sit about twenty six centimeters tall. We'll share we'll share and all the details with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. And so who is the kind of bride? Like, what kind of bride is going, I want this? The kind of bride that wants this is the bride that's probably pressed flowers herself. Yeah, okay. Or kept little trinkets for herself in a box. Mm. And I think, realistically, that's everybody. Mm. We all have that secret little box we hidden do. underneath the bed or yeah. in a wardrobe yeah. that's got those important life memories in it. Yeah. And so my challenge to everybody is preserve. Don't put it in a box where you're yeah. not going to see it. Yeah. Put it out on display where you can enjoy it, where the next generation can enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. That gives you an excuse to tell your story yeah. and your love story. Yeah. Because whilst those memories are alive, it helps you on the days where you want to murder your other half. Yeah. Yeah. And they come, you're married. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it really the presence of that is so important, I find, in the home. Like... And the sentiment around these are the things that we keep and hold on to because they remind us of that particular point in time. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's much better than filling your home with things that don't mean anything. It's just because you saw it on the block or yeah. something like that, yeah. you know? Yeah. This is something that means to you. It's had a moment with you. Yeah. I mean, your wedding flowers are the only thing you have with you all day long. They're it's with you so when you get true. ready. Yeah. You take them when you leave. Yeah. When you are nervous walking down the aisle, what are yeah. you holding on to? Your but flowers. also, what are you holding on to afterwards? It's like, because I saw one of your friends where it had the um, the bow tie as well, which I loved that. So then it's kind of like a, yeah. you know, his and hers as well. Um, and uh, also that the preservation can continue through other things. Yeah. So one of the um, other talking points was around the fact that you've preserved medals and you've preserved christening gowns and little baby shoes. and Absolutely. I mean, this is the point. It's We've got to stop filling our homes with things that don't mean yeah. things and hiding the things that do mean in cupboards. I love that. Because that's such a great talking point, and I think that's, that's literally who you are. That, Absolutely. That's your slogan. Stop showing the things that don't mean something and hiding the things that do. Yeah. And if we lose that box, which over time I've lost things, we've all lost things, right, yeah. that are really important. When like, you've moved and packed up. Yeah. Happens. Yeah. So those baby photos I still have, but for example, the little umbilical cord or the first haircut, I have lost those things. And obviously, who has their bouquet? Like, unless you've preserved it properly. Yeah. This is such a, Yeah. Or, I mean, even if you have done the right thing and you haven't lost it yeah. and then you pull it out of the box and you find moths have gotten to it. I know. And then the moments, I mean, if you've ever had it happen yeah. to you, it's like it a makes you hysterical. I know. Yeah. And then you can't do anything about it. And then it. you can't do anything about it. I know. I know. I feel like what you do in preserving people's moments and that keepsake is just, it's so special. And I feel like in our industry where everything is so fast and you're spending so much money and so much time and so much effort to get everything done for the day, what do you have to keep forever? And this is it. Yeah. I love it. So what does, what, what does, if I'm a couple, I'm a bride right now and I'm like, I want this, how does it happen? How do you get the bouquet? to where it needs to go to do what you need to do. Yeah, look, it, it really depends on where you are, low 
location wise. Yes. Uh, if you're Sydney based, you can either drop it off to us or we can organise a crew to pick it up. Yep. If you're interstate, Australia Post is your best bet. Okay. While you can use a career company, they all use basically the same network. And Express Post from most states to us now is the next day. Okay. You send it by 11 o'clock on a Monday morning. Yeah. I have it the next day on Tuesday. Okay. And then how do you actually send it? Like in a box, in, in a, a bag? In a cardboard box. Okay. They send boxes most yeah. that fit most bouquets. Yeah. If you've got a meter long bouquet like me, you might have a little bit more yeah. problem. Um, but box it up, crush newspaper to provide some yeah. cutting so it's not rolling around in yeah. there. And then you put in some frozen veggies to keep it nice and cool because they're cheaper than ice packs. Oh. You can pick up some frozen home brand yeah. veggies for 3 or $4 now. It's cheaper than an ice pack. Yeah. Keep it nice and cool in transit and I'll have it the next day. Oh, amazing. And who is buying these packages? Is it... Sometimes, like, the mother of the bride? Is it the bridesmaid? Yeah, look, it's, it's most of the time it's the brides, but we're getting a big push now from mums, yeah. and it's that, I wish I had done this. Yeah. And so she's making sure the daughter's That's going to be me with my daughter. Yeah. That's the truth. You'll be like, <laughs> well, I don't know. Imagine our bouquet side by side. Yeah. And it's bringing in the parts of her bouquets too. So I've just finished one where we took a part of mum's dress, we actually cut a part of mum's dress and tied that around her stems instead of the ribbon she held on the oh. day. And so it became that bit more of a family yeah. heirloom yeah. for that next generation. And tell me, how long does it last? A lifetime. Um, so I'm, I'm not saying that flippantly. We do have one in the showroom that's over 64 years old. What? So we have to share that. 64 years old. Yeah, so I mean, that's so special. I did knock it off the shelf probably about 15 or 16 years ago now, so it has looked a little better. Okay, <laughs> but it's still there, it's still got color to it. Yeah, most of them in our showroom are more than 10 years old, mm -hmm. and um, there's even a few that are over 20 years old. We've got ones from the Sydney Olympics, so they're more than 24 years old now. Oh, wow, Apparently that's flown by so does the bride need to come visit you in order to pick what she wants or can you do sort of an online consult like how yeah look i prefer you to come to me i can do it through zoom yeah the reason i prefer you to come to me is that um i get to understand the significance yeah. of these items to yeah. you i'm pre preserving your story and so to know what your story is mm -hmm. i need you to tell me and share that with me yeah if you're clicking buttons on a screen there's none of that personality that's going to come through in your frame, and yeah. I need that to yeah. happen. Yeah. So you can we can either do it by Zoom, or I can send you even a sample case because again, I have a big issue with computer screens not necessarily providing you the exact color things are going to look. You might not realize that this dome is this big, <laughs> for example. So I send you templates so you can see how big things are. Mm. And you can actually see the mouldings and feel them, see that you like that colour. That white is actually an off-white or mm. that timber is slightly more red than you thought it was. Because we've all bought things online and gone, oh, it's not the colour I wanted. Mm. Well, if this is going to be in your home for 64 years, I don't want that to be the, oh, it wasn't the colour I wanted yeah. for 64 years. Yeah. No, for sure. So that customization and personalisation is definitely part of that process. And... So how far out from the wedding do you kind of need to have an understanding, locked in, let's go? Personalization and what you want in terms of your display, we actually choose after your wedding. Oh, okay. So you basically just need, I need to know that I'm receiving the bouquet and yeah. I can get the rest sorted. And so what do you do? You actually preserve the bouquet So we preserve the bouquet. Six to eight weeks after the wedding, we can handle the flowers again. And that's when I'll say, hey, Wendy, you yeah. need to have a chat. Yeah. By this stage, you've usually finished having your honeymoon. Yeah. You've hopefully got some photographs back from your photographer. Yeah. And then we talk about how you want me to put it back together. Because mm -hmm. obviously the reconstruction into a dome is very different to a frame where it's got a flat back. Yeah. So we talk about how you want it all put back together mm -hmm. and then what accessories you want to go back in. Yeah. It. So that's really critical in terms and of... And here photos, we like. see the headpiece. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. And so I know my children right and I have 
many children. So would they, is this actually, like, can you actually lift it? No. No. Okay. So you can. Because they would be doing that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everything's completely sealed. So okay. you can't actually take yeah. it off. Okay. Um, Practical question there, but I had to ask. No. Yeah. No. And so we go through on all those things on how to hang it as well. Even our frames, it's nice and simple. They're all completely sealed. Yeah. It comes with the wire to hang it. You've just got to find a hook to suit your wall. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually thinking if, if I could pull together, what I'd love to do is the christening gowns of the kids and just like a piece from each and then do that as a frame. Yeah. So at least I have something. That would be lovely yeah. but I think that from the wedding if you are a sentimental person this is something that you can continue that journey with Absolutely. which is so beautiful well it's that journey of life yeah and creating sort of your own photo wall mm. with extras because I mean photos are great and yeah. they capture moments but this brings it to life I feel that's right it's, yeah you've got that object permanence so it's that Objects often have so much more memories to you. And, I mean, mum's got dementia, which yeah. we talked about last time. Yeah. And so I know now that part of her therapy is we expose her to different objects and materials yeah. that hold memories. Yeah. And so that makes what I do so much more important because yeah. I didn't realise now that... She whilst... recognises some things. That's right. Yeah. So it may not matter now, yeah. but 40 years' time, that may be... It's amazing something that connects you to yeah. that child yeah yeah amazing and can you talk me through a little bit about pricing just so people yeah. are aware of, absolutely yeah. look again it depends on obviously how big the bouquet yeah. is and what sort of display they choose prices start from thirteen hundred dollars and go right up into the thousands i mean we've done coffee tables with bouquets in them Oh, wow. So when I say it's customised, it's customised. Yeah. Something like this piece here would set them back about $3,000. Okay. Okay. The average client spending between that two to $3,000 mark. Okay. Okay. And do you have a payment plan or is it, how does it work? Absolutely. So before the wedding, it's only a deposit of $330. Okay. Um, at that eight week mark we talked about, it's another 330 and the rest is paid off over that four to six months to take us to preserve those flowers because it is quite a lengthy time to preserve the flowers mm. so we give them that opportunity to pay it off over that time yeah which is great well yeah and they will receive them six months hopefully later, later. Yeah. yeah amazing and then you can ship it back yeah australia wide australia wide okay all right we've got a lot of information there how good's that seriously i think that there are so many brides again hearing that Oh, it's the two to three thousand dollar mark, and then you're planning a wedding, and you're like, I really want it, but I don't know if I can afford it right now, or is it a priority? And then, and then the wedding happens, and you're like, I'm not letting go of this. Like, I'm gonna keep this, and to pay that three hundred, you know, thirty dollar deposit, and then be able to do it afterwards, is amazing. And and that's the thing, isn't it? Really, I mean, I think I just read the latest statistics on weddings is, I think we average budget now is about twenty five thousand. And 25% of all weddings go over budget. Yeah. Oh, in Australia. Like, I mean, the wedded Wonderland average cost of a wedding, I don't know if I would say it's, it's around the $100,000 mark. Yeah. So, uh, I think Easy Wedding just released their yeah. statistics and said yeah. that, yeah, the average wedding of goes an Australian over, wedding. Of an yeah. Australian wedding yeah. goes over budget by 25%. Yeah. So, by the time it gets to the end of the wedding and when they're starting to think about this, yeah. they're going, oh, I'm already overspent. Yes. But then it's 12 months later and it's regret kicks in. Yeah, yeah. And I wish I had of. Yeah. And so my big thing is, well, don't wish you had of. Yeah. Just pay it off. Yeah. And I mean, at $3,000 or $2,500, I think it works out to be about $90 a week. Okay. Yeah. Over, Over that months. period. Yeah, yeah. And then if your parents are thinking or your, your bridesmaids are thinking of a gift and you're like, I've got everything that I need. I don't really know. This is something that they can really contribute to and that could even make it that little bit more special, you know? Absolutely. And yeah. I, think, I mean, most of us are in that situation. And yeah. to your registry, ladies. Just going to put that out there. Add it to your registry. You'll get another vacuum later. Well, I mean, <laughs> who needs a vacuum? Yeah. <laughs> True. A broom works just as well. Yeah, sometimes. yeah, yeah. No, I do think that if it's not, if you are a sentimental, and I am that person, I have kept things that my husband and my kids are like, what is this, mum? 
I love also historical things. So I'm like a double whammy. I, I'm sentimental. I hold on to weird and wonderful things. I also love like my wedding dress, the christening, everything. I still have everything that I was able to hold on to. My invitation that I have, the coin that was in the invitation, the ribbon that was on the invite. So I would have been definitely the bride um, that would have loved this. And I think that just people knowing that the option is available. And I want to ask you a bit of a controversial question. Um, we are seeing, because, you know, we, we work with so many different types of people who preserve um, the bouquet, the resin side of things and some of these trends that we're seeing on, on TikTok. Yep. Um, what's your take on that? And what's the difference between that and this? Okay. Let's be real. Let's be real. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't touch resin. And I don't touch resin because resin is a UV reactive polymer. Um, so in layman's terms, resin is a plastic substance that we're coating your precious items in. Okay. And once it's in there, it's stuck. You can't get it out. Okay. Then it's react UV reactive, which means once it's in UV it starts to discolour and it's going to go yellow or champagne in colour. Okay. So now your precious items, um, your invitation, is stuck in a plastic, slowly going yellow. Okay. How quickly it goes yellow depends on the quality of the resin that provider has used. Right. Um, but I have items in house laboratory. So we have insects embedded in resin that are 10 years old. And I know that they're all yellow. Mm. And that's museum grade resin. Mm. And that's in a laboratory, in a blackened room, yeah. in a shelf that's all velveted. Yeah. It's just there so we can train staff on what bugs to watch out for. Yeah. So to me, then your precious items are stuck in something that you can't get them out of, and it's discolored, mm. and in my opinion, ruined them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I. I think resin's great, and if it stayed that crystal clear, I'd be the first one to go do it. Yeah, and offer it actually. But it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. Okay. And so now you can't get the things out again. Yeah. And that upsets me because yeah. these things are precious to you. They are. Yeah. So the difference between that and say a yeah. dome, if you then had the dome and went, look, I don't know what I was thinking. A dome doesn't work with my life. My three kids just keep touching it and yeah. it's driving me nuts. It needs to be in a frame. Yeah. I can always take it out of the dome and put it back into a frame. Oh, so you can do that after the fact. So nothing is permanent as Yeah, such. yeah, yeah. Okay, got Whereas it. Whereas with resin, it's permanent. That's it. It's discoloring. Yeah. And That's it's it. It's not, stuck. It's there. And it's not preserved because, okay. yeah. The other issue is a lot of these people that are using resin are using silica gels. To preserve the flowers. Okay. So you're not actually preserving the flowers, you're just drying out the flowers using silica gels. And we all know what silica gels are because you've all bought a pair of shoes. Yeah. It's that little packet that's in your shoes. Yeah. They're using a variation of that. Right. Okay. And so what's happening is some are not getting out all the moisture. Not all flowers are suitable for it because they've got way too much moisture. So your peonies, your succulents, mm. anything like that. They can't work out how to extract the mm. moisture. And so you're getting things like the see-through flowers or the burnt flowers yeah. because it's having a chemical reaction in the process mm, mm, as well. Mm, mm. So I don't recommend it. Mm. I say to people, whilst it's a great trend and if you want to do it for things that don't matter and yeah. it's just home decor, that's fine. Yeah. But for things you actually want to preserve and keep for a lifetime, yeah. stay away because it may be two years, it may be five years, but eventually you're going to end up having a yellow item that you're not happy with. Yeah. Yeah. And the intention is the longevity. Absolutely. That's the intention. So if you want something that looks like it has been preserved in a museum that is sentimental, that is for your family, and that is long lasting this is the route. If you want something that's going to keep your stuff stuck in a, you know, display, which may, may change over time, 
then that's essentially what the resin is for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think that, yeah, it just depends. It depends on the kind of person that you are and what you're really looking for. That's right. And what you're paying for. And I guess there is that big push in as a society that we are a throwaway society. Yeah. I mean, we're all expecting a new phone every two years. Yeah. Um, but I think when it comes to items of importance, your flowers, your kids' stuff. Yeah. Um, I do a lot of funeral work too. So I can imagine. I can't yeah. imagine. Yeah. Um, having my wedding bouquet and then going three years after the fact, oh, it's yellow now, I'm throwing it out. Mm -mm -mm. Then why bother, in yeah. my opinion? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I understand. And I think from your perspective, I mean, if you are doing at all of those, you know, really significant moments in people's lives, what you're essentially doing is wanting them to last for them. Exactly. You know, because you're wanting them to go, this is the memory you want to be able to look back on it. You want your kids to be able to look back on it. So I'm assuming that you do you preserve funeral flowers as well? Is that what yeah. you're saying? All oh, right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and again, because for a lot of people, that's yeah. the last moment you yeah. have with someone. Yeah. And so you're wanting to hold on to everything you've got of someone. Yeah. And I think that's a really special, important moment. Yeah. Um, particularly when they've gone quickly. Yeah. Um, and you haven't had that opportunity. It. Yeah. Yeah. Do you keep the boutonniere as well? So that's uh, yeah, a hundred percent. Because guys, despite what she tells you, this is your wedding day too. <laughs> it's very important you keep that boutonniere <laughs> on that jacket, blazer, shirt, and um, and that's also something that can be preserved. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So. Think about what you want to keep. I think that's a starting point. Then have a chat and see what um, can be preserved. And from what I'm hearing, you can pretty much preserve whatever you want. Anything. Yeah. And the way that's going to be displayed, whether it's certificates and photos and items and, um, and where you eventually want to put it may change. And you can always come back and make that decision as well. Absolutely. I love it. I want to. I, I'm going to get my. I'm going to get my bouquet reworked. Pretend. Shh. Nobody needs to know. Um, but do people do that? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Um, and you know, husbands do really romantic gestures where they bring me in photographs and say, "This is what the bouquet looked like. Can you reconstruct?" Yeah. And so we go out and source the flowers and reconstruct. That's a great anniversary gift. And actually. so they re gifted to them as an anniversary gift as a surprise and the husbands that do that kudos because that's thinking out that's of a, yes and that's a big deal I feel like even for like Christmas gifts as a surprise can you imagine receiving something that's preserved maybe some family heirlooms some photos you know if you go into my parents house they have we call them the um, like it's the wall of fame because we have all of our like ancestors it's almost like you know when you watch um the movie coco yeah and you have the um what is that called Afrenda. Afrenda. Yeah. yeah that's what but it's on a, so there's probably 50 photos that are framed on on the walls around the house so i know if i found something for my father he's, he's got his original passport photo for example he was also um you know back then they were conscripted to go to the army so little things like that and you're thinking oh my parents have everything whatever well, I mean, that's the thing. We are getting harder and harder to buy for. Yeah. Especially our parents. Yeah. Because um, they have everything. Yeah. And if they don't have it, they just go out and buy it themselves. Yeah. yeah. So it does make it really easy to just sort of go, okay, what can I take without them knowing? And things like, um, just as you, your kids are the most important yeah. things to you, you're the most important yeah. things to your parents. So even if it's finding your christening gown yeah. and a photograph of, you know, you and each of your siblings wearing that same gown yeah. and having that as a photo collage around that gown. Yeah, so beautiful. Or, you know, photographs of their wedding day with so beautiful, bits honestly. and pieces from their day yeah. that you found. Uh, do you do a package maybe around, like, mum's corsage, dad's boutonniere that they can have and then you get to keep your bouquet and your... Yeah, yeah, do you have yeah. those kinds of yeah? So we do have a package, and I it, it so it's usually a photograph in the middle, and a photo, and then mum's corsage yeah. and dad's um button yeah, boutonniere yeah, and 
I say that you find a photograph of the, you know, all of you together, because I think that's a really nice moment. Yeah. Um, because for a lot of parents, weddings are a mixed emotion. Yeah. Um, I know with my dad, he cried the whole day. Yeah. I don't know if I can tell you oh. why. <laughs> um, but even down to our yeah. daddy daughter dance, oh. dad cried. <laughs> yeah. And he's a big, burly bloke. Yeah. Who doesn't show emotion. My dad's on the spectrum. Yeah. So for him to cry, that was just. Oh my unreal. goodness. So I got his done. Yeah. With a photograph of us dancing and oh, crying. Oh, that's so beautiful. You're going to make me cry now. I know. I'm so um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, but I think. You know, how many of us have photos of our parents at our wedding in their home versus our photo? You know, like you walk around the parents' house and a lot of the times it's the photo of the kids who got married. Yeah. But them in the photo with their boutonnie, like uh, and their, um, you know, uh, corsage or whatever it is. They're even dad's, you know, and I mean, bow tie. I, so nice. I've grown up in the floristry industry. Yeah. I mean, mom, So your mum was a florist, right? Mum yeah. was a florist. So yeah. Um, I'm what's called an under-the-counter baby. Yeah. Because mum worked at the counter and I was literally under the counter while she made bouquets. So, for me, I always grew up that you bought corsages and you bought boutonnieres yeah. for everyone that was super significant That's in right. yeah. your life. Yeah. As a sign of respect. Yeah. So what's more respectful is to then say to them, yeah. I want you to keep that. In perpetuity. Yeah. With a photograph of us. Is that what it's called in perpetuity? Yeah. Okay. I love that word. And you, I want you to keep it and I want you to have it forever yeah. and I'm going to do this for you. Because that's how significant you are for me. I love that. This is so significant. I think what you do and you can, your passion, and this is why I want you to come in. I was like, oh, please, you know, because we're doing these podcasts and obviously we have Wedded Week coming up, but for us it's so important that people understand the story behind the brand and that there are a lot of people in the wedding industry who do what they do because they either the skills were passed down or they have a, a talent and ability to connect. We're in an emotional industry. You know, our couples are getting married. It's a love story. And a lot of the times you see on social media, and I know we have this conversation, you see that end result and sometimes you know, people see things and what is that? Oh, oh, that looks easy. Or, oh yeah, I'll just get one of my cousins to kind of figure that out for me, yeah. whatever it is. This is an offering that I don't I actually don't know anyone else in Australia that actually has this service for brides um, and for anyone who wants to preserve in this manner at this level with scientists at a laboratory and museum grade. And I just think that what you do is amazing and you're part of that story for keeps forever. Yeah. So thank you for what you do, honestly, because I think it's very special. Oh. And we're very we're very lucky to be working with you. I, I, I love what I do. And yeah. I, I think that comes across. Yes. Yeah. I love it. And uh, weddings are so intense and anyone planning a wedding knows that, yes, they are a love story. Yeah. But there's so many more emotions that go with them. Um, and so I say to them, when you come in, it's your safe spot. Yeah. Tell me anything. I mm. don't care. If I end up listening to you whinge about your third cousin who got drunk and decided yeah. to <laughs> do the Eagle Rock on repeat for an hour, that's fine. Get it off your chest. Yeah. Because I want this to be a moment where you just go, yeah, this is something for me as well, hey? It's for you. Yeah. It's for you to start your new life together as a couple. Yeah. And go, this sucks. This yeah. is our family now. Yeah. And it doesn't matter at all the third cousins and the aunts and the this and the that. At the yeah. end of the day, this is our little sphere. Yeah. And I want that to be a happy start. Yeah. Regardless yeah. of all the other drama that, that yeah, we know, we know, yeah, yeah. You know, it rains in your wedding day. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I'm the first one to say, if it rains in your wedding day, your photos will be beautiful. They will be, and I've yeah. seen a lot of wedding photos. You just gotta roll with it. You know, you just have to roll with it. And I think, um, having worked in the wedding industry for so long, you and I have seen a lot of things. Um, but it's what you remember and what you walk away with as well. You know, and things will happen. Oh yeah, that it's. You have 
a, a, a room full of one, two, three hundred, whatever it is, number of people um, that all have their own opinions, that all have their own ideas of how a wedding should be. You yourself, within your own family unit, have different ideas of what your wedding needs to look like and should look like. And You know, you might be dreaming about it from the age of five. You may not be a, like a non-conventional bride and they're like, okay, I'm getting married. I have no idea. I've never even looked at a wedding dress. And we've had both sides. Oh, absolutely. You know, but I think it just comes down to today with so many trends and so much noise and so much happening is that think about the things that are everlasting. Oh, 1%. Yeah, yeah. Like 100%. And, yeah. I mean, I say that every couple, because I speak to them um, just before your wedding, I'll always call you and yeah. say, just confirming, yeah. I mean, I'm getting your bouquet. Yeah. This, you're all good. You've got your care tips. You, you're sorted. There's yeah. nothing else you need from me. Yeah. On the day, take a big, deep breath and absorb it all. Mm. Because as you said at the beginning, it, the day goes like this. Yeah, it does. I really don't... I mean, I'm in the wedding industry yeah. and I still don't know where my day went. Yeah. I was getting my hair and makeup done and the next minute I'm in the car going to my hotel. Yeah. Like, I don't it know what flies. happened in between. <laughs> it does. It flies. Yeah. Um, so just take a big moment. Yeah. Look at the room. Look at what you've designed. Because yeah. that's phenomenal. But things will go wrong. Yeah. It doesn't matter. What matters is you're marrying your person. Yeah. And I had a number of years ago, my, one of my brides, her wedding venue burnt down the day before. Oh, goodness. And I remember saying to her, like, did you lose your crap? Yes. Yeah. how else do you feel? Yeah. And she said, I did. And to another venue, you put up their hand and said, you can still get yeah. married tomorrow. And she said, and then I realized it didn't matter. Yeah. I was still getting married. Yeah. And it, that's when I really that's realized. That's amazing. Yeah. That... That's really the what it's all about. It's it's about yeah. love. Yeah. And keeping that love and just having that moment to just go, yes, okay. Things are gonna go wrong. But as long as I'm getting married, it's okay. That's exactly right. I feel like these days the the <laughs> cultural weddings and the cross culture, they are less in numbers, mm. a little bit. Um, but they're louder than ever. Mm. Oh, they're like out of control. I yeah. just, I just think they're fun, and I really want to be invited to a Chinese wedding. If oh, anyone. yeah, so the tea ceremony. I want to do the so whole tea ceremony. Yeah, and again, it's because I get to ex be exposed to all these things, and I get FOMO, and I'm like, if only I was there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's amazing, honestly. Um, I think that let's get um, maybe just a final wrap up. I just want you to tell us what you really want people to know about your business, where you're at, and just that final message yes because i know you've gone through a rebrand website i think that people just need to be aware of the fact that this business has been running for 32 years you took over eight years ago and whilst you work in the wedding industry you do so many amazing things a lot of people don't know about your yeah. offering what do you want to say to florists you know we spoke about that whole referral program of you working with florists and then being aware of this offering because I think they're the ones that probably need to be letting their brides know. So whatever you want, we're going to edit it, but you okay. just tell us how <laughs> what this journey's been like and who you want to be working with and what that that end goal looks like for you as a business owner. Working with florists. Working with florists. I, look, I'm I want to work with florists that use good quality flowers. Yeah. That are after good techniques. Um. And I'm not fussy. I, I don't care if that's in your garage or not. As long as the quality of the flowers are quality. Yeah. Because I need quality flowers to do good quality work. Yeah. There is a direct correlation between what I get in to of what course. I can export out. Yeah. Yeah. So I say to all my brides, make sure you're using a good quality florist. Yeah. And you can tell that by seeing their work and seeing what's posted on socials. If you're seeing their work on socials and the flowers halfway through the day are starting to look wilted yeah. and are starting to look bruised and it's a one-off, the bride was probably rough. Yeah. If it's a lot of photos, the florist is probably not using the freshest qualities. Yeah. So we want fresh quality flowers from our florists mm. and we're wanting the florist to remind their brides of us early in the process. Yeah. The, because of how labour intensive our process is, I am limited to the number of bouquets I can accept. Mm. So finding out about us the week after their wedding yeah. is less helpful than them knowing about it 
when they've chosen their bouquet. But I feel like that's when you think about it, right? So you're like, oh, my wedding's coming up, you know, it's in a couple of weeks. Oh, I want to preserve my flowers. How do I do it? But so, again, a lot of things. If the florists give them the heads up, so if then the at least. Is yeah, there going, yeah. Look, I've designed this. This is what we've picked. It's yeah. going to look gorgeous. Yeah. And I think you should look into preserving it if you're that, you know, yes. so inclined. That's going to give them their heads up to implant that idea rather than it being at the end of the day going, yeah. I really don't want this to die. I'm in love with it. Yeah. And then also missing out, really. And so, florists, we need you on board. So, florists, we're on board. Brides. Don't call me up on a Monday morning and panic. Try and remember when the florist hit you up yeah. on that. Don't be trying to stress with all these ideas beforehand. As I said, I don't need you to tell me what you want until after your no. wedding. Okay? I just need to know you want to get it done. Yeah. That's good. I love that because I feel like the bride has so many things to think about. So if she just knows she wants it preserved and then can figure out how, yeah. then that's fine. The, the hows, the, the yeah. finer details. Yeah. Just go get married, have a honeymoon. We'll sort out that later. Yeah. So I just want you to be clear-minded yep. when you get back. And then when you come in, come in with no expectations. Mm. I always say to them, I love when they come in and they go, oh, I, I've got exactly what I want in my mind. Yeah. Because they never leave with that. Yeah. <laughs> they always end up changing it because you don't know what you really want until yeah. you start the process yeah. with me. Yeah. And that's getting to know that story behind why each piece is sentimental. So bring as much as you could possibly want into that appointment because mm. it's always easier to go, no, I don't want it, mm. than it is to go, oh, my invitation was roughly this yeah. big. Never know. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. Bring everything. I think mm. that's so important. And you don't um, – it's easier to edit than yeah. not to have it, right? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean – we're experts in this field. We've been doing this for more than 32 years. Yeah. I've been in the business now for 18 years. I've been head shop for eight years. Yeah. I personally, with the business, just won two awards last weekend. Ah, oh, congratulations. Thank you. So we just won uh, Australia's Ladies Business Product-Based Business of the Year. Okay, amazing. So that's beating out all sorts of things, chocolate yeah. businesses, bath bombs, anything. Yeah. Um. And that comes down to our quality yeah. controls and our museum grades. We've just signed on with the Professional Framers Guild as well to make sure that we are making sure that our oh, museum wow. quality is up yeah. to their standards as yeah. well. Because, again, we want to make sure that this stuff lasts. Practice what you preach. 100%. <laughs> I want to make sure that I'm meeting things. Yeah. So, I mean, we've been a finalist in 10 different awards yeah. this year. So taking home two purple trophies on the weekend wasn't too bad. Yeah, love it. So it was just amazing to just finally see that what we are practicing is actually coming into fruition. Yeah, yeah. Well, keep up the amazing work. I think that being part of that journey and that story is everlasting. I'm inspired. Like I said, I feel like I'm in a Disney movie. And um, consider what you can preserve because it's about the legacy of that love story and that life journey. And I just think, yeah, this is amazing. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you for coming in. Thanks Thank for you. Me. Yay. Yay.